Hey, I'm Brandon Lee, and this is gonna be a video answering your FAQs about gyro stabilization. So gyro stabilization is a way of stabilizing your footage without having to use your gimbal. So you can shoot handheld and get incredibly smooth footage with some software stabilization in post. Recently, I posted a video about a piece of software called GyroFlow, which is a plugin that you can use in Resolve and you can use it in Final Cut X and you can use it as a standalone program. And I also got a lot of questions. So this video is just gonna answer as many of those questions as efficiently as possible. And if you wanna learn even more about gyro stabilization, there will be an extended version of this video in my film school, Unscripted Studio. For more info, check the link in the description. First of all, how does gyro stabilization work? Let's just understand this real basically. Gyro stabilization is recording your camera's movement data as you shoot. So along with the video file, gyro stabilization is recording a separate track of data. It has the x-axis movement, y-axis movement, z-axis movement, and you can take that data and then in post, you can use software to reframe your footage so that it cancels out any unwanted movement that happened while you were shooting. And depending on the parameters you choose in post, you can have different degrees of stabilization. So you can fine tune exactly how steady you want your shot to be. Which is better, warp stabilizer or gyro stabilization? Well, all other things being equal, gyro is much better because it's not guessing. Warp stabilizer is basically just analyzing the image. It's looking at vector points. It's trying to guess what is the intended motion and what's the accidental motion. And then it's sort of stretching and warping around the image to fix it. But gyro stabilization is using data that is known, it's not guessing, it's using known data that comes from the gyro sensor of the camera. So it doesn't need to do any weird guessing or warping so you don't get those artifacts. So overall, gyro stabilization is better. Now the main drawback to gyro stabilization is that it will add a step in post. It will add some extra computation and potentially some extra rendering. And also gyro stabilization has some more finicky little details that make it harder to use. Some cameras aren't supported, some lenses aren't supported. You need to do a few extra steps. So that brings me to our next question. Which cameras are supported with gyro stabilization? Well, if you go to gyroflow.com and you just click on supported cameras under the gyroflow documentation, you will find a website that tells you exactly which cameras are supported. It's the cameras that record gyro data as part of the video recording. So that means every GoPro, pretty much every DJI drone, Sony Alpha cameras, such as the A7S III, Insta360, 360 cameras. Black Magic cameras are mostly supported. Red cameras, some of them are supported. Many phones are supported because most phones have accelerometers and gyroscopes built into them. That's how you play video games on phones. That's how it knows when you're going from horizontal to vertical. And then most FPV cameras and FPV systems are supported because FPV drone pilots have been using gyro stabilization for years. Personally, I've just been using gyro flow with my A7S III. I have other ways to stabilize my GoPro footage and my 360 footage. I don't need gyro flow for that. Now here's the big question. What shutter speed should I use when I'm shooting with the intent to stabilize it in post? There is no specific shutter speed that you have to use in order to get a stabilized image with gyro flow. You just have to basically understand how this all works and then do some trial and error to figure out what shutter speeds work the best for the types of shots that you're trying to stabilize. Basically the shakier I anticipate the shot being, the faster shutter I use. So let's say I'm shooting something very steady. Like I'm just standing here, with my camera and I'm barely moving at all. And it's just waving around or it's jittering a tiny bit and I don't want those jitters to show up in the final footage. Well, for that kind of shooting, then I can probably get away with using a one over 50, 1 50th shutter, the normal shutter speed that I would use for shooting 24P. And that's because my camera shake will be very slow it won't be like sudden jerky camera shake. It's just sort of like drifting around. If my hands are jittery and I'm getting jittery shake in my footage, I would probably use a shutter speed of one one hundredth in order to stabilize that out in post without having weird artifacts. And if I go up to that shutter speed, then I would probably also shoot in 60p for reasons that I'll explain a bit later. If I'm hand holding my camera and I'm walking very, very carefully, I might keep the shutter at one one hundredth. However, any faster movement than that, like if I'm walking down a sidewalk at a normal speed or if I'm running, I'm gonna to try to increase the shutter speed as fast as possible at that point. I'm just gonna go all the way up to the fastest shutter speed I could possibly use with the available given light and I will be shooting at 60 frames a second for those kinds of shots. 
If my camera is on a gimbal and I'm just walking around slowly, the shot is overall very steady and I just wanna give it that extra glassy smooth touch, then I will probably keep my shutter right at 1 50th for those shots. I won't adjust my shutter. However, if I'm moving faster with the gimbal, if I'm moving over rough terrain, if I don't quite trust that the gimbal is gonna cancel out the camera shake that will cause motion blur, then I will probably start increasing my shutter speed. So I might shoot at 60 frames a second and then a shutter speed of at least 100th going on up to 1 8,000th or the fastest possible shutter speed. In some cases, this could be an excuse for me not to use an ND filter. I can just crank up my shutter speed and then run around with my gimbal and stabilize it in post with gyro flow. Also remember that gyro flow will be cropping in a little bit in post, so you're gonna wanna shoot a little bit wider than normal. Either use a slightly wider lens or just take another step back. Can I use gyro flow with a gimbal or do they somehow cancel each other out? No, they do not cancel each other out. Gyro flow plus gimbal is a beautiful combination. However, some gimbal shots you won't want to stabilize in post with gyro flow because they will just look better if you use IBIS or in-camera stabilization. The reason for this is that you can use a normal shutter speed if you're using the camera's inbuilt stabilization. You don't need to ever increase the shutter speed in order to get better stabilization. The best thing to do is always try it out for yourself. Shoot a lot of test footage and try it out with different stabilization types, the built-in stabilization or the post stabilization. In my film school unscripted studio, I've created a method I call Fusion. Fusion is my system for mixing together my mirrorless camera, 360 camera, action camera, and smartphone to create shots and scenes that would otherwise be difficult or impossible as a solo shooter. Fusion is all about learning the strengths and the weaknesses of each camera so you can dynamically switch between them as you shoot, keeping your creativity flowing. You'll see me shoot a fashion film, a travel video, a cocktail bar ad, a seamless transitions video, and a vertical video. Each Fusion lesson has an in-depth, real-world shooting tutorial, followed by an editing timeline breakdown in DaVinci Resolve. And here's the best part. You'll get a download link to my DaVinci Resolve project file and the video clips from each lesson, so you can see the edit on your own computer. And as a bonus, I'm including my Lighting in Motion lesson. This lesson is all about moving your lights for dynamic effects and mixing together different lighting sources. Have you ever put a light on a gimbal? I bet not, but you're about to learn how. You're gonna learn some techniques that I guarantee you haven't tried before. And the entire lighting kit still fits in a backpack. There's a lot to learn. Click the link in the video description and find out more about Unscripted Studio. Can I use gyro stabilization with all manual, non-electronic lenses? If you're using a lens that doesn't have electronic contacts, like maybe you're using an old vintage lens or a cinema lens, and it has absolutely no way of electronically communicating with your camera, can you still use gyro stabilization in post? The answer is yes, you can, but you will need to have a custom lens profile for that lens. The way this works with gyro stabilization is that the gyro data is used to stabilize your footage in conjunction with some extra data about your lens that you're using. So I'm not gonna pretend like I 100% understand how these lens profiles work, but I do know that whatever lens you're using when you shoot, you do need to load up the appropriate lens profile before you stabilize that footage, or you need to load up a very similar compatible lens profile. And the good news is that Gyro Flow already has a lot of user-generated lens profiles in a database. It's just a, a drop-down menu that allows you to select the lens. And Gyro Flow also has sort of a default setting for any detected focal length. So if you're using an all-manual lens, basically the thing you have to do is search and see if Gyro Flow already has your lens profile stored within its database. If it doesn't, then you'll need to custom make a lens profile for yourself using Gyro Flow's instructions, then you should be able to carry on and stabilize your footage even with your all manual lens. Can I use Gyro Flow with a zoom lens? Let's say you have a lens that zooms in and out on your camera, can you stabilize that in post with Gyro Stabilization? The answer is uh, kind of. If you're using Catalyst Browse to stabilize, this is Sony software for Gyro Stabilization, different from Gyro Flow, then somehow Catalyst Browse is able to detect which zoom lens you're using and the focal length, and you can still stabilize it pretty well, provided you're using an electronic zoom lens. 
a zoom lens that has electronic contacts that communicate that data to the camera. So that would be either Sony native zoom lenses or Tamron zoom lenses, or I believe Sigma zooms, I haven't tried them, but basically lenses that have electronic information conveyed to the camera. Gyroflow is not that intelligent, unfortunately, because they don't have access to some of the metadata that comes with the footage. So basically, if you're using Gyroflow to stabilize, you're probably gonna wanna stick to primes or you wanna stick to the lens at either its widest or its most telephoto setting. That way you know at least exactly what focal length you're at. If you're in any of the in-between focal lengths on your lens, then you don't really know the exact focal length you're shooting at. It's gonna be like 44.555 millimeters or something. So then Gyroflow won't really know exactly what profile to assign to that lens and then you won't get perfect stabilization. Can I use Gyroflow with an anamorphic lens? I don't know, I haven't tried. Probably the same rules apply. From what I've heard anecdotally from other people, you have to make a custom profile for your anamorphic lens and then it should stabilize just fine. Why not just use a gimbal instead of gyro stabilization? Why go to all this extra trouble in post? This question to me is honestly a bit annoying. There is no one tool that you have to use and therefore you can't use any other tools. They're all good in some circumstances and they're all bad in other circumstances. A gimbal of course makes for an easier editing workflow because your footage is already stabilized while you shoot and you don't have to do any tricks in post. However, if you don't have a gimbal handy or if you don't want the gimbal look and you want more freedom in your camera movement or you want to augment your gimbal stabilization by adding a little bit of extra smoothness and you don't want to warp stabilize it and get all those artifacts, then guess what? Gyroflow is lovely. So the answer to why not just use a gimbal is because there's other tools and sometimes those tools will work better, but sometimes they won't. And it's up to you to just try out this free open source software for yourself, see how it works for you, and then figure out when you want to use it and when you don't want to use it. Is Gyroflow available for Adobe Premiere? No, you can't use Gyroflow in Adobe Premiere yet, but they're working on it. So if you're an Adobe Premiere user and you really want to use Gyroflow, then what you have to do is use the standalone Gyroflow application. You have to import your footage into that, stabilize it, and then render it out. You can render just a selected clip. You don't have to render the whole thing. And you can also choose different formats to render to. You don't have to render out to the native format or ProRes. There's a lot of other options. Is Gyroflow available for Final Cut Pro? Yes, and according to Gyroflow, I'm gonna just read this off my phone, Gyroflow Toolbox allows you to import Gyroflow projects directly into Final Cut Pro. This allows you to take the stabilized data from Gyroflow and use it within FCP as an effect directly within Final Cut Pro. Will Gyroflow slow down my computer? Will it slow down my editing process? The answer is yes, but not a whole lot. I found that I dropped a few frames on playback sometimes on my M1 Pro Max MacBook Pro 14 inch when I was using 60p footage in Gyroflow in DaVinci Resolve. So what I do to get around that is I just enable render cache and I have it render cache as I work. And finally, a few commenters have pointed out that gyro stabilization is nothing new. FPV users have been doing it for years. And yes, that's true. They've been using the built-in stabilization in GoPros and DJI action cameras to stabilize their FPV shots for a number of years. So yes, this kind of stabilization is nothing new, but it's gotten a whole lot more usable thanks to Gyroflow. All right, so that's the end of my FAQ. Hope it answered a lot of your questions. If you have more questions, go ahead and post them in the comments. I will answer when I can, and also the community is welcome to jump in and provide their answers. And thank you to the open source developers who created Gyroflow, because this is free software, and they continue to work on it, making it better every single day, and I always appreciate that. I don't want that to go unappreciated. So thanks for watching. Please click like and subscribe if you wanna see more from me. Please check out my film school, Unscripted Studio, and I will see you in the next video.